Hello and welcome back to Defluence Podcast. I'm Uncle Bonehead and with me as always is the talented and brilliant author Alan Taylor, aka Cryptocracy. I don't know about that brilliant part. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to throw it in there. But with us again for a return trip or a return appearance is Nathan and Chris from D-Buzz. And we, we want to clear up some, well, I invited them back because me personally, I would like to clear up some things and some differences between Leo Threads and D-Buzz. But they've got a lot, Chris and Nathan's got a lot more to announce here and talk about than this. But um, you guys want to talk about the announcements first and then I can, I'll We'll, I'll save my gripes till later. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you go over that. Okay. As as we we said earlier in January, we shifted from solely specializing in software development, which we worked on Dbus for about three years, to adding in uh, striving to be also uh, having a strong marketing effort, not just for Dbus, but all of the hype community, and we've made some. Uh, major achievements, um, one of them landing a Filipino-based social media blockchain or, or blockchain-based marketing firm. And they ultimately helped us land uh, VIP tickets in a Bangkok technology summit. And we met a lot of people there. And what I, I'm coming to find is that the crypto and finance influencers in the Philippines they're all closely related, related and affiliated with one another. They either all know each other or they're friends of friends. And by meeting them and associating with them and also providing value, um, Nathan and I are interested in joining um, the Filipino community for crypto and blockchain. And their ultimate vision is to make the Philippines the crypto blockchain capital of the world, similar to times when the Philippines was a texting capital of the world at one time, it was a selfie capital of the world, and it was even the social media capital of the world at one time. So I support their vision, and I'm interested in helping make Dibas a Filipino flagship project of, of what the Filipino community can can come up with, because almost all of our, our staff are Filipinos, um, and maybe Nathan can also talk about that. There's there's other announcements, but but... Um, that's one of the things is, is uh, getting really closely knitted with the uh, Filipino crypto community here. That is cool. That's awesome. Does that mean uh, you expect uh, the DBuzz community to mostly be Filipinos at some point? Um, not, not necessarily. Uh, that's kind of like the current push right now because... I've lived in the Philippines for 13 years. Nathan has lived in for seven. So, you know, we, we don't only have a reputation in terms of our livelihood and, and work, but we know a decent amount of people here. And I consider ourselves to have a fair good amount of credibility. And that will help us um, not only bring on users, but also respect um, among locals here. And uh, one of the people who we partnered with, uh, which you know was for our next event in March 17, they were recent, recently featured on CNN Philippines, which you know CNN is one of the largest news networks in the world. Oh, yeah. And the last the last event that we attended, which was in Davao City, that was featured on PTV, PTV, which is a a Filipino news station. So I think w we might be one of the only. Um, social media content dApps on Hive that are fairly close to being able to speak on uh, mainstream media channels. That is That's awesome. That is just outstandingly awesome. It, what you guys seem like you're doing with 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 the Philippines is kind of if you if you've ever gone to Three Speak and you just look at Three Speak's front page and the trending stuff, it's eighty percent. Venezuela, you know, users from Venezuela. It's three speak is huge in Venezuela. What you guys are doing is 
you're going to be huge in the Philippines. Well, you're already huge in Philippines, but it, it's what. Well, well, I'm I'm currently in Thailand right now, and what we're interested in doing is actually not not making it solely like I'm interested in in Deepa's being very balanced, um, not not forcefully or artificially, but I think we have something to offer not only the Philippines but every every single uh, country in the world. But it's kind of like the foundation is going to be the Philippines, and that's because that's where we have the most support. Deepa's was actually launched off the back of a. Um, in-person meetup group here in Davao City, Philippines, it, called HighPhilippines.com. And in the same way, we're going to get the larger crypto and blockchain community to help us bring uh, bring Divas to market. But afterwards, we're going to replicate it, particularly in Thailand and then Vietnam, since we have uh, a team member there. And then after that, I'd be looking to Mexico. And I might even be able to visit Africa to see the uh, the well that was built. Um, one of the things is that I've heard people uh, be a little bit fearful about visiting certain areas in the world. And I actually consider that um, a particularly beneficial thing for us because it's not another barrier to entry that other people aren't willing to do. But I am willing to do that. Um, and I'm willing to meet a bunch of people consistently throughout the year in multiple different countries. And we've started this already without a high proposal or very much support for that matter. That is cool. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I certainly uh, believe in, in starting where you are. So if you have a big presence in the Philippines, that's a great place to start. You can launch from there, build on that, and take it worldwide. So, uh, yeah, and if you're traveling, uh, then that just fits right in. So you can take it to wherever you're going. Absolutely. Nathan's got it. They both got themselves muted. You guys don't have to mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was gonna let Chris talk for a little while. Um, yeah, so we've been we've been heavily um, Chris Chris has been heavily working on the marketing side of things, looking for um, partnerships and any any type of um, connections that we can make to bring the platform to more people and just on the ground meeting people in person and just just getting out there and getting the word out, um, kind of doing like guerrilla marketing. And I think that, you know, Chris is a very um, outgoing individual. And I think that, you know, if he consistently um, pushes the effort that he's doing right now, um, that the floodgates are going to open um, before long onto the, the hive um blockchain for for all the users that he's currently onboarding um we're currently working on some um new developments um our our devs have been working um to make the current site as stable as possible i'm just making sure that there's all the bugs have been worked out um and that it's very um performance friendly and um working working the way it should be working um and also i'm not i don't remember if we had launched um our join.dbuzz last time we spoke we have a new onboarding service from dbuzz where people can actually join hive um, just providing a phone number and i've been told by many people it's one of the most um, streamline ways to create a Hive account um, and start using Hive. And and we're looking um, to even further um, optimize that um, portion of, of our onboarding um, so that it's even easier. Um, an another feature that me and Chris have been talking about a lot um, and that I really am amped about seeing added in is a um, chat feature inside of dbuzz um, i think maybe last time we spoke um, we had talked about one of our uh, side projects called hive.pm which is a hive messaging service 
Um, so we're basically wanting to take yeah. that um, and do the same thing that we've done with Debuzz, just really optimize it um, and make it make it really performance friendly, and then integrate it into the Debuzz app. So while you're on Debuzz, you can actually chat with other members of Hive inside the the embedded chat on the Debuzz app. Yeah, um, I remember playing awesome. with that. <laughs> that would be awesome. I really like this landing page. Uh, so someone can can start a Hive account using just their cell phone number. Yes. That's incredible. And I think and then, um, Chris had said that um, by using your Dbus profile, if you send someone to um, your Dbus profile, that actually becomes like an affiliate link. Um, so you get the reference for onboarding them to Hive. If they, if you give someone a link to your profile and then they join from your profile, um, you're actually marked as the their refer um, on on Hive. And do they do they receive rewards for that? Um, Chris, can you uh, speak about that? Okay, what what happens is when anybody signs up from a user's profile page, it will direct them to the correct join d buzz page, and then they will be set as a three percent beneficiary for the person who onboarded them, uh, or, or 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 the person that they onboard will have them, the, the person who onboarded them, as a 3% beneficiary. But if at a later time, when they start using the platform, if the person who onboarded them doesn't provide enough value, they can remove that 3% be, uh, beneficiary value. It, it's I'm stumbling over my words a bit, but basically, the affiliate program that someone else developed uh, multiple months ago, I think even maybe even in 2000, um, maybe even a year ago, we integrated that with the join.d.buzz, but we did it in a way where there is not a messy URL. Like you're not going to see d.buzz slash username ref equals question mark. <laughs> it's just going to be your username and that's it. And that will make it much easier for people to onboard others without making it appear like dbuzz is, is a spammy site. Right. It's now that okay. 3%, is that like their time limit on that? Will it, will it stop or... Do, does the user have to actually go in there and change it? The the user would have to go in there and change it. But what I'm in the process of doing is replicating what we had in HiPhilippines.com, but on a much larger scale where I know a lot of people in person and the people affiliated with me that we keep building and growing, we're going to all know each other in person. It's not just going to be an online like an online like profile pic we're going to be a, a on the ground group and that's going to provide people w with education and if they have an issue with the three percent um beneficiary they could actually get that removed but by themselves through online tools that can be provided by others and will eventually provide that tool too but i my idea is that many of the people will not be interested in removing that be bene bene benefit reward for the person who brought them on to high or debuzz because the person who brought them on is going to be providing with them with a lot more in-person value that it just won't make sense just because um generally i think people will be very grateful for the opportunity uh that we're going to be providing and that um the people who onboard others will be providing but that's uh it will still be up to their personal decision to make and so uh, if someone uh, uh, recruits uh, one of their friends, they, you would think they're, they're going to also serve as a mentor, teaching them how to use the platform. And so that's, that's providing value. Um, that 3% beneficiary, is that an uh, ongoing thing? So every post that individual makes, the, the recruiter gets 3%? Yeah, it's, it's an ongoing thing as long as it doesn't get erased. But we're also going to redo some of the video tutorials that we did before. Our, our team member and friend, Jacuzzi, his real name is Tim. He's going to start making video tutorials. And that that type of education about the affiliate links, the percentage, how to remove it, 
and why it might be beneficial to keep it there if the person who onboarded you is providing amazing mentorship. That kind of stuff will be explained in videos and we'll eventually be sharing it uh, more consistently on deep on the Dbuzz platform through shared buzzes. Well, that's amazing. That's a, that really is amazing. Uh, so let's let's get to the, the heart of, of the discussion. I, I'm kind of curious. You, you you touched on some of these. Um, what other things makes Dbuzz different than uh, Leo Threads, uh, the other short form? Uh, content uh, 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 platform that that just launched. How are you different than those guys, and why is that important? Um, so the way that our platform works versus my understanding of Leo Threads is that Leo Threads is in the comment section of a blank post that Leo Threads um, creates. Ever so many, I guess, posts. Our, our comments on, on that post, they just create a new one and then all of the new, all of their new threads um, just become comments um, on that blank post. Um, the way that Dbuzz works is that we actually create a post. When you buzz, you're actually creating a post inside of the Dbuzz community. And when we originally launched, we had um, considered doing the, the comment section um, as th like we, we had looked at doing it both ways. Um, but ultimately, we decided to go with actually doing posts versus comments. And it was um, upon um, the advice of, of my developers. Um, there seems to be some kind of performance issue, maybe not initially um, through doing it through the comment section, um, but eventually, depending on, you know, if there's a, a trending post um, that gets a lot of interactions um, and causes the, the comments of a post to become bloated, um, it become, th there becomes an issue. And then the, the other issue that we had was with the idea of like creating blank posts um, for comments to go in, kind of like as a a base plate for the 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 buzzes or Leo calls it threads um, to go on, and um, you know I mean ultimately it works either way. Um, I know that there's some I had um, Chris was mentioning that there was some concern about the uh, auto vote voting on posts that they um, presumably are blog posts, um, but it's instead short form content. And for me, that just goes back to um, individual services um, that provide auto voting um, have the ability to filter out what they're voting on so i mean ultimately those services i mean we've been around for three years um they've had opportunity to if there was a demand um there they they've had opportunity to um basically modify their services um to a com company their users and if they don't then there's an opportunity for other services um to provide um, auto voting services that better fit their users. So I don't know that the auto voting issue is one of Dbuzz. Um, I think the auto voting issue is that of the auto voting services. That's right. Um, and then, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think that, that that's kind of um, where, we're, where we're at on that. Um, I, I just... As far as doing it through the comment section, if someone could articulate a valid or, you know, co convincing argument as to why doing it through comment sections versus doing it through post um, is a better alternative, um, I would love to hear that. Um, and I would love to jump on and, you know, 
even a, on a, a live interview or podcast, you know, have that conversation with someone about it. Oh, I um, it just seemed like to me that the way that the Hive blockchain work is that you create posts um, and then people comment that's on your profile. Um, and then there's community. So inside of each community, it's niche community. So for for us, we created the Dbus community and that's our our um, community. And inside of Dbus, we chose to do short form content. Um, and so I think that instead of, um, I, I think that the, the change needs to come at either a platform level of the platforms. Um, if they want more long form content, then they can adjust their services to filter content or, or to, um, you know, show the long form content over the, the short form content. But I think that it's a, a, a individual platform, you know, based on their users, what their users want, that it's on them to provide those, um, you know, services or features um, versus, you know, asking everybody else on the Hive blockchain to basically um do things in, in what seems like a clunky fa fashion so that they're um they don't have to make any changes right, um, right and yeah. for me it, it seemed like almost like spaghetti having to create this new post and then all the comments go in and then it just became very clunky and then it became a performance issue and like i said with a few hundred users Maybe that's not an issue. With a, a thousand users, um, a few thousand users, um, it could become an issue. With tens of thousands of users, it's going to be an issue. Um, and with a hundred thousand users, like I was just basically told, like this is not going to work using the comment section. It's it's going to be like you're just going to have like lots of issues. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm building for you know success so why am i gonna go with a a a, a um mechanism that basically is going to limit me in the future um versus doing it the most optimized way in the way that the hive blockchain was meant to be used yeah. i don't think the hive blockchain was meant for people to create blank content and then use the comment section as i mean if people want to use it that way it's fine like i have no issue with 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 them doing it that way that's and it seems like they they've done done well with it um so far <laughs> but um i to me it just didn't seem like that was the way that the hive blockchain was yeah. Yeah. Well, so you know many. the beauty of the blockchain is you know, anyone can build on it and so if you, if you can build a dap then uh why not and so uh let the market decide whether or not that dap has any value and so yep. obviously uh, the leo people they uh they have a strong community and they've got people behind their thread um product uh and if it does well then it does well uh when i when i look at it uh, you know i follow certain keywords you know so someone on the blockchain mentions Web3, for instance, uh, I'm interested in that. So um, every now and then I'll get one from Leo Thread that says, you know, some, so and so said Web3, and I click on it and I go up there and I just see a bunch of comments. Like you say, it's a blank post that thing that says multi user thread or something like that at the top. And then it's just a list of comments. And I have to look to see <laughs> who said Web3. I don't like that look uh, as a user, I don't like the way that looks. Uh, I want to be taken to the exact comment where that's mentioned. Uh, so my hope is that Dbuzz can facilitate that. I've got some very strong feelings on this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hear them. <laughs> okay, auto voters. I, I consider auto voters laundering because it's not any kind of a network or any way, or any, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not any kind of a 
way to actually gauge your audience's engagement on any single post because people are using auto voters because one they probably don't have time to sit there and read everybody's posts and they just want to get the get those rewards for being the first couple that are on there that's exactly why they're using it yeah, yeah. and they're not actually reading the post watching the video it's it's plainly apparent just go look at three speak and look at how much any video in the trending has made compared to how many views it's had there's no way yeah. somebody made 40 bucks on a video with only 10 views uh, no no i agree well i that's that's i think Audible has has a practical value yeah i do uh, but like I'm, anything I'm else getting, it can be abused i'm getting and, it. and it certainly is probably <laughs> and that's that's the number one thing about auto voters. Um, number one. Number two, when it comes to Leo threads, and I know they're probably going to listen, and I've stated this already before, um, you lied to us. You lied to us that Project Blank was going to be something similar to D-Buzz, and it turned out that Leo threads was absolutely nothing but a marketing ploy to keep people on on leofinance.com um i don't like being lied to and i and i get i get told when i i've, I've went around with taskmaster and a couple other people hey, oh leo threads is great that's fine and dandy but why would i send my audience to the a finance website to post long or short form content yeah, no, that's no, that's a that's a stupid. valid point because if you're writing about <laughs> if you're writing about farming or agriculture, anything that is not finance, right? Then uh, Leo oh. fi Leo is not the place to go. But, but um, they're, they're very clear on that. You yeah. know, they're focused yeah. on finance, and exactly. So I, I certainly think uh, that's a that's a great point that you're making there. And then you then you've got these the, got the the argument about. Uh, uh, the short form content has no place on Hive. Um, yes, it does. Short form content is just as popular, if not more popular, than long form po content. Whether it's a video, whether it's a thirty second video, you know, twenty minute video, or one of my three or four hour long videos, or whether it's a four hour podcast, or if it's a twenty word tweet or buzz whatever you want to call it it's just as relevant as somebody that, that posts a 3,000 page work of fiction or 3,000 word piece of fiction it's all in the audience's perception of what they value and exactly. yeah and you cannot tell me that there is no place for short form content when we've got this dap called live to and all it is is pictures just like instagram and right, right. <laughs> some of these some of these posts are getting 20 30 bucks a pop with all these upvotes and yeah. there's and comments and yeah that's short firm content and it's valued by the audience so these yeah, yeah value values in the eye of the beholder and exactly you know, you can do the same thing on your Hive blog. I mean, you can just go up there and post a picture. Yeah. The uh, um, question is whether or not other people on the blockchain are going to see any value in that, and that's what the votes, up votes and down votes are for, to so determine that. So Yeah, that's, that's uh, my that's point. That's what the blockchain is. That's my point. Who, yeah. who is the ones that determine what is of value? It's not... Um, well, I think that, you know... You you touched on something earlier about um, some some content being over rewarded through the means of auto voters, um, and I don't see you know this outcry against this happening um, on 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 a lot of content like it is on yeah, that's, that's where I'm short getting, form where I was getting they get to. Like a two cent vote and then they they come and you know hit it with a, a down vote. 
and discourage these new users that we spend, you know, a lot of resources trying to educate and onboard. You can't expect the first post that someone puts on Hive to be like a work of art. You know, like oh, yeah. they have to like you have to to lead these people in and if if that's what Hive is going to be and and I think that it should be that. I think it should be a blockchain for the people, right? Not a blockchain for the 1% of elitists that think that they're better than everyone <laughs> and, and create these, you know, um, what they think is super, super important and, and great content and everybody else's is not, you know, or no one else has a voice or um, no one else's opinion matters. Right. And as, you know, one of the things that me and Chris are doing, because I want to I want to make it clear and clarify I'm against spam. I'm against per like perjuring or copying other people. Like I'm against the 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 policies um that that a lot of hive users stand with. Like I I don't want to see illegal content on the platform. I don't want to see people um copying other people's stuff to try and monetize it. I don't want to see these things, right? Um, right. But at the same time, short form has a place in the this ecosystem. Um, and, you know, as me and Chris have started going to these events, there's a big demand for some kind of crypto Twitter, right? And it's like, well, we provide, we already built a uh, crypto platform that allows you to post short form content like this, right? And you can um, earn off your post and it's immutable and it, it's on the blockchain. Um, and and you, you're, you're all of your connections because one of the, the big things um, that, and one of the reasons that we created DBuzz um, is one of the, the biggest things that creators on web2 platforms fear the most and have them bowing to their overlords at the uh, Facebook or Twitter or YouTubes or whatever it is um, is that they have massive followings on those those platforms right and what happens if they lose their account they lose those followings right um, on Hive, yeah. that can't happen. Just like we lost Chris. Those connections are, are forever, right? Yeah, we lost Chris. Connection on Hive, <laughs> and that's that's for life. I totally agree with that. Uh, yeah, you know, especially since Elon Musk took over Twitter, there's been a huge push for a decentralized uh, Twitter. Um, and so people have flocked to Mastodon. Uh, you know, to get their, you know, decentralization fix. But Mastodon isn't crypto monetized. Um, so I think there is a place there for a crypto-based, crypto monetized, short-form um, content platform. And if you can provide that for the blockchain, I'm all for it. Mastodon, I've looked into Mastodon um we had deployed a Mastodon website before, just checking it out. Um, one, your your content's not immutable, um, and two, if you if the the from what I understand, and and I could be wrong on this, but what I do from what I I did understand of Mastodon is that if you're if the the provider goes down, you lose your account, and I could be wrong on that. Um, you can download for, and back up your account before they. What go. is it? If if they warn you before they go down, you can download and and your account, and or move to another one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there there are issues there because I mean, how many, you know, platforms are going to to rise and fall, um, and if you're not, you know, on it, you know, and you. You come. Oh, let's log in, and uh, everything's gone. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just think that the, the blockchain provides you know a much stronger. Um, fe like it, it provides much stronger features 
um, for this this system than than what Mastodon did. I absolutely agree. Um, yeah, he certainly Hive wins on censorship resistance. Uh, Hive wins on monetization. Uh, Hive wins on you know immutability. Uh, there are several ways that Hive wins. Uh, but for some reason, people caught wind of Mastodon and and just flocked to that uh, for whatever reason. Um, but I certainly think uh, uh, D-Bus is on to something. Um, you know, I've used threads. I'm not particularly against it. I'm not particularly super excited about it. But it, if d can be more community agnostic in terms of, well, it isn't finance focused, you know, like Leo is, but right. if anyone on the blockchain can share any type of content, um, then I, I think that's a great thing. So I, uh, I, I'm certainly all for that. I, I do have a question for you. What are you doing? Uh, you, you talked about interoperability with, with certain front ends that aren't necessarily supportive of, of DBuzz. What are you doing to sort of draw, to make that bridge uh, so that you can be more interoperable. Well, the 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 first step is going to be making the titles better because I, I initially tried to give a clear explanation of of how we should do the titles um, in terms of the the software development for it. But we had so many bugs that we had to fix that I overlooked that the instructions I gave weren't understood and and carefully followed or properly followed. So we have to make an additional fix where the default is that if you post from Dbuzz, it will automatically, the default will be, it looks just as if it was posted from a Sensi, Hive.blog, uh, PeakD. There's some other interoperable things that we have in the pipeline, but I'm not yet ready to announce those. But the first thing that we're going to do is make it so you won't even be able to tell initially uh, without a more, more careful look that it was actually posted from Dbuzz if you're using a long-form platform. That's cool. Okay, well, that, that would be real cool. Another thing I'd like to see is, you know, I think it would be cool, uh, you know, if I go to my my blog on on you know my primary blogs on the blockchain, for instance, or Essence, any of them, you know, where where it shows you the share buttons, then I could see a you know share on D Buzz button alongside those, or a buzz beside the reblog, you know, button. They used to something of that nature that would allow me to just take a post and and buzz it. There used to be That'd a deep really, buzz button. That would be really cool. Yeah, yes, so we, I think we have a, a buzz button. Um, I think it's actually on 3Speak. If you look at the 3Speak website, you'll see there. there's a button there um, that says buzz it. And that actually creates a post on dbuzz from 3Speak. And we've actually started working with the 3Speak team. Um, myself and some of my developers are helping them. Um, with the SPK network, um, we recently um, published the proof of access for um, 3Speak. Um, it's still in, in development, um, but we have a, a working model um, for being able to do the proof of access. Um, and then we're, we're also working on, on some of their um, upcoming, upcoming updates um, on their platform as well. Okay, cool. I do see the buzz on on the three speak platform. It'd be cool to have that on Essency or you know the the primary you know blog. Uh, and, well, um, on the blockchain, it's it's also on views and views. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's v e e w uh, s dot i o. So it's e with the S or without the S. But those are the two platforms that the buzz button is located on. And we actually built that, I think, in 2021. So it was fairly long time ago. And we have a service that if you go um, if you go on our page and you click on the on your profile icon in the upper right hand corner on mobile, there's a developer um, tab. And if you click on that, you can actually integrate it into your website um, your, yourself. And uh, so the technology oh, cool. is there. But but Ascensi, uh, Hive.blog, and Peak D and the tribes haven't implemented it yet. But now that Ascensi said that they're interested in, in building in short form uh, viewing on their platform, 
I, I think it would be a good time to revisit that idea of them adding the buzz button. And two additional ideas that I would like to maybe uh, bounce off you two is what do you guys think about if a user goes to Ascensi, if there's like a light switch, like a flip switch, where they could users can flip between short form content and long co form content in just one one uh, click. That would be very cool. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, some I get it. Some people don't want to see the short term con uh, content, and there may be some short term content creators that don't want to see the long uh, form <laughs> content. Um, you know, personally, I, I I like writing long form, uh, but I'm a writer. I've been doing that a long time. Some people would prefer a short form. So I think switching back and forth and being able to integrate the two as well, if you'd like, that would be a great uh, feature. I like the and, short and form because I like the memes. Another <laughs> idea, which was uh, this idea was actually pitched or talked about by someone who uh, was a heavy, heavy criticizer of us and was part of the, the initial um hive users who tried to uh basically kill our project in the beginning or at least change our initial plan significantly i don't think he's on the blockchain anymore it was bernie sanders uh but he talked about having a toggle where you could adjust how many characters you would like to see so if you would like to see let's say 700 characters you put 700 or you'd adjust the toggle but if you like to see 280 that's twitter's format you could see that but if you only if you're only interested in seeing maybe 50 characters you could also adjust that, and out of respect for him sharing the idea with me, uh, I kept I kept it to myself. I didn't even implement it either, but it's been you know two and a half years now, so I think it's safe to say that I, I could share the idea and um, possibly in the future integrate it with what we're doing too. It definitely makes sense to me. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, yeah, so if 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 I wanted to say see no more than five hundred uh, characters at a time in my feed i could set it for that and then uh, based on those 500 characters if i see a post i want to read then boom i can click on that and read that so um i think that would be a good uh, uh user experience feature Absolutely. and and this this goes back to playing the long game where you don't sacrifice uh long-term gains for temporary short-term wins because the way that we're organizing our platform, it's a proper, well thought out, organized way where something new and innovative, such as the toggle switch or light uh, flip switch, or not even that, but something we can't even think of yet, it will properly integrate into our organized, well thought out platform versus trying to only focus on doing one thing. And then in the future, we could have gone, you know, built it through comments, but when someone comes, comes out with a toggle switch, we have to, you know, refactor or completely re rethink our initial strategy. And that's why we're more about careful decisions, well thought out decisions versus um, meeting the demands uh, or, or, or trying trying to adjust based on people that we don't necessarily, in some senses, in specific topics, are more qualified than us. We're open minded. I love constructive criticism. I'm willing to adjust, adapt and make changes. But if we think that we're correct and we're actually um, the specialist of microblogging on Hive, we're not going to cave to pressure when when we don't think it's good for our users, the Hive community, or anyone for that matter. Well, like, and and just to touch on that, um, like I said, like I am a hundred percent for criticism, uh, and and to have a a conversation about this. And like I said, if someone could articulate a argument um, for comments versus post and be able to address performance issues um, and the, the technical side of scaling it, um, then yeah, I would love to have that conversation. I mean, I would love to hear, you know, th more, more thoughts on this um, because ultimately we want to give the best experience to our users and also the best experience um, to all the users of Hive. So ultimately we want to do what's best for the community. Um, but up into this point, um, you know, like no one, you know, as far as, you know, contacting me um, and, and, you know, raising any points, they have yet to do that. Um, so um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, Chris has mentioned to me that there's been some pushback on the, 
on the post versus comments. Um, but no one has directly uh, reached out to me um, and given a, a reason. Um, and as far as like I'm aware, no one has has really give a clear um, cut explanation to Chris as to why we should change the way that we are doing things. It appreciate that. I really appreciate the that the way that you guys are focused on, you know, the long term uh, vision rather than short term gains. Uh, I think it's very important. And code, as you know, uh, I'm not a coder, but yeah, I do know that if once you make a decision to go a certain direction, you kind of get locked into that at a certain time. And it's difficult after you've written thousands of lines of code to go back and change things. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so it adds to the time that you're on the project. You run the risk of writing what you call spaghetti code. You know, so there are all kinds of issues that can uh, develop from that. So I, I think uh, thinking through how you want it to look in the long term is, is, a, is a huge plus. Then if you just get bugs, you just call them features. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, one more question for you. Uh, so you mentioned, uh, you know, speaking of this long-term versus short-term gain, uh, you, you're reluctant to launch a token. What do you think maybe a time frame is for a Debo's, a Debo's token? Um, we're still probably, um, I would say, you know, at least at, at a minimum, I would say like six to eight months um, before you're going to see any anything there. Awesome. So, yeah. so me has more uh, daily active users than you guys. Yes, yes, um, they do, and a lot of that has to do with with us um, focusing solely on software development, and we just shifted where we're adding in marketing and. The Somi team, I reached out to one of their team members and, and I really like what they're doing. And one of the things is that I'm not interested in, in our in DBuzz being the next Facebook, the next Twitter, the next YouTube, because what happens is those are actually monopolist uh, companies. And I'm not interested in, in leading a monopoly. I'm interested in being a leading DAP of maybe a thousand DAP ecosystem, where instead of instead of us taking, you know, the winner take, takes all. I'd much rather prefer being maybe the top five or top 10 DAP out of hundreds of alternatives or even thousands. Um, so the fact that so me is currently doing better than us in terms of uh, daily post or um, something like that, it, it doesn't bother me. I'm actually interested in meeting their team in person. And I'm one of the things that, that might be a little bit distinct is I'm, I would like to meet people in person. Um, you know, you know, addressing criticism, uh, you know, online or on the on the chain, that's OK. But um, I'd like to build friendships with people who have five dApps and people we onboard. And um, I would love to uh, talk in person to some of the uh, SOMI um, founders and, and executives because they actually share one one of our marketing firms. Um, so they're doing very well. And, and I applaud them for the work they're doing. But I also think that we're going to increase in users significantly, even in a short-term basis. That's awesome. Well, I th you know, it's still impressive. You guys are the fourth largest uh, commu community uh, on the blockchain. So that's, uh, that's still pretty good. Um, uh, you're, you're right behind ActiveFit and Leo Finance. Um, so that's, that's, that's impressive in its own. So. Well, they better, they better get their marketing figured out because Chris is on it. He is on <laughs> it with the marketing. Just That's one, awesome. I, I'm looking for more uh, good stuff from you guys. I got one quick would, thing. I, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It's it's totally unrelated, so you go ahead. Okay. I, I, would, I would like to see some discussion between uh, Leo Finance and particularly with Nathan because if you notice in the beginning of this interview, sometimes I stumble over my words. I don't speak as clearly. But it, it would it would be very nice to to have you know live discussions between the the founders of uh, of Leo Finance and Nathan. Because a lot of times, that some of the things he says, even though I don't agree 
uh, I, w- I wouldn't do the same thing. Like I wouldn't launch a coin as early, but he does say things that I think are smart. And uh, I don't have enough time to go over everything he says, uh, but I'd be very interested in kind of, um, you know, erasing that gap between Dap Swords and us versus them. Uh, and more just, you know, uh, I-, I prefer friendships over, uh, you know, gaps. And I haven't been able to, uh, you know, pierce the boundary of being able to talk to, uh, uh, the uh, Cal or or the Leo Finance founder, and I haven't also been able to talk to Scaredy Cat guy, but I'm interested in in Nathan, uh, preferably maybe having a live discussion on your podcast and even other podcasts where he talks with the Leo Finance team, and together we might be able to uh, come up with ideas that will improve both of our platforms individually. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Just to, um, just to touch on that, you know, like our our goal here is the, you know, fatherment of of Web three, um, decentralization, freedom of speech, and and the growth of the Hive blockchain, and so the success of other um, platforms on Hive, we see that as our success as well. Um, I'm not like really in favor of the mon- monopolistic viewpoint of having like the these monopolies on on um, different um, portions of the the web3 space or the social media space um, and you know one of the, there was a, a conversation I had at one of the last events that we went to and someone was asking like what are you doing to tweak the algorithm to make it more like Facebook so people keep scrolling. (laughs) And my response to that is like, I'm not interested in doing that because I'm very against like my whole idea behind creating this platform was to take the cocaine out of social media where people aren't just mindlessly scrolling through nothingness. Um, They're actually getting posts that are from the people that they follow that are the things that they're interested in right versus like facebook cooking up this batch of like highly addictive scrolling right they're just selling you to be a zombie basically on their platforms and i'm just i'm not interested even if it meant that i could have you know 10,000 extra daily users that just scroll mindlessly all day. I'd rather not have that um, because that's not for the betterment of society or the betterment of of Web3 or, or, or any of this stuff that we're working on. Um, it's just mindless mindlessness, right? Totally. So I'm, I'm, against, I'm against that. Um, and and I, I want to see, you know, all the dApps on Hive working together to create platforms that that bring in users and, and provide the most value possible. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's a great point to end on. Uh, Absolutely. Certainly, uh, I agree with you, you know, uh, rising tide, uh, raises all ships. You said ships, right? Yes. P? Okay. Just want to make sure family friendly <laughs> show. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Chris. Well, Thanks, I imagine Nathan. it raises mo- more things than ships, but definitely. <laughs> ships. <laughs> And thanks for coming on, Chris and Nathan from Debo's. Go check. Go hey, I check. appreciate you having me back on, and uh, I look forward to talking to you all again in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. You guys are welcome on Thank anytime. You. Go check them out at D.Bo's. I'm Uncle Bonehead, and this is that, that Alan other. Alan Taylor? Yeah, that other guy, oh. Alan. <laughs> yeah, that other guy, you know, <laughs> the one that talks too much. Check us out at <laughs> dfluis.online. We'll catch you guys again next time. Always be good. Be safe. Never, ever stick your finger where you wouldn't stick your face. Ooh. Yeah.